uh, Western coverage and interest in India restricted to the three C's, caste, cows and curry. That's the angle they look for because they've been taught that, oh, you know, India is this uh, very poor, very unequal country. It's defined by all of these aberrations from normal society that, oh, they have a caste system which is unique in history, whereas many countries have had a caste system. Many countries still have a class system, which is almost indistinguishable uh, from a caste system. Uh, if you reverse the gaze, look at, oh, they worship cows, they worship uh, idols, uh, they, uh, you know, are so oriental. Then, uh, you know, the curry aspect, if there's something positive to write about India, then it's about something neutral like food, which can be appropriated and enjoyed by anyone without any of the cultural baggage of this regressive and oriental uh, country. That's something that has been a theme for a long time, to reduce the society and culture of uh, any weak power, any defeated or colonized uh, community to its worst forms in order to brutalize them, to prevent them from uh, defining themselves. It's almost universal from Western countries towards non-Western countries, or the global South is the preferred term, so countries that were uh, formerly colonized, Latin America, Africa, Asia. Generally, the uh, tone and gaze used in Western coverage of these countries is very either patronizing or quite hostile. So for example, in the last year itself, we've seen around COVID, there has been bewilderment among Western journalists and Western experts and uh, newspapers and channels that why aren't more people in Africa dying? They almost say that out loud. They, uh, of course, wrap it up in more neutral language, but basically it comes down to how can these poor, unequal, authoritarian, illiberal, dysfunctional countries be doing better than us on anything? When we have 10,000 cases a day, when we we have 500 deaths per week. Why aren't they dying in bigger numbers? Because that's their comfort. They use stories from Latin America and Africa and Asia, negative stories in order to manufacture consent for the establishment at home that, oh, stop complaining so much. Uh, we're quite uh, you know, all right compared to these other countries. They can't use that with COVID. So then they start complaining because this is a new and confusing situation for them. But then you've seen pushback from journalists and intellectuals in Africa, for example, that, oh, sorry that we're not dying in high enough numbers. Uh, sorry that you think that uh, we must be hiding statistics because deaths don't matter in our culture because our people are just dying like flies anyway. Who's even noticing? These are the attitudes that uh, are being betrayed by Western media and uh, their correspondents. What's unique to India is that there's a much larger number or substratum of society that is willing to amplify these messages. That uh, there's uh, this, what you would call a comprador class, who act as middlemen between the West and the natives of India, who curate the news that comes out of India, and also regurgitate the tropes that come out from the West. In other countries, there's much more resistance because this class is weakened, discredited, kept far away from power, or has simply been exiled to go do what Radio Free Europe did, like uh, Cubans in Miami. But in India, you know, they control academia, the media, uh, the bureaucracy institutions. So it's much more amplified in the case of India. And the best way to deal with that is to ignore it. It doesn't have an impact on your day-to-day -day policy decisions. And in fact, this negative uh, coverage means you're probably doing something right because you are acting in your own country's self-interest and not in the interest of other countries. You have to take uh, media narratives with a pinch of salt, read between the lines and look behind what's being said to understand what the motivations could be behind that. And that's just good practice. So you should question everything. Anything you read in the media, anything you hear in the media, you should question it. You should compare it to your own lived experience. You should compare it to what you're hearing from people on the ground. Because if you look at foreign correspondents who are sent to India or sent to Africa or sent to Latin America, do you think the correspondent uh, sent over by the New York Times or by the Guardian, the uh, Washington Post, uh, 
from these countries, spent any time learning local languages. No, they, they think, oh, India is an English speaking country. I'll just send someone from the Asia desk over for a few years. They'll spend three, four or five years there. We already have a nice little black book of uh, contacts for them. They'll meet other English speakers in diplomatic receptions in, uh, in New Delhi. And those are all the sources you need. Why would you trust ordinary citizens uh, when you have these reliable, westernized uh, native agents who are just like you and who say the right things and know what's expected of them.